Because of the 40th anniversary of the Seiko Arnie, three new reinterpretations have been released, and it's kind of made me feel like this. <laughs> The pavement was his enemy. Why am I annoyed about this? Let's get into it. Yes! Welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. So in 1982, Seiko released the H885, and it was the first Ani Digi dive watch with an alarm. A hugely iconic watch for two reasons. Number one, the look of it. I mean, when this was released, people must have thought, this is supposed to go on your wrist nicknamed the tuna because the case sort of looks like a tuna can but it's so tally and so 80s big bold and doesn't apologize for it either the second reason why this watch is so iconic is because one of my favorite actors of all time Arnold Schwarzenegger his personal watch was an H885 whether it was given to him by Seiko is another matter but he wore it in some incredible movies of the 80s my favorite being Predator and another Another favourite of mine, Commando. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's what made you, you did. I lied. They fitted his role and his characters in these movies perfectly. Tough jungle and commando style watches that could take a beating, a missile or two, an alien punch, and still give you a good time. Yeah. In 2019, Seiko released a reinterpretation in the form of the SNJ025. This is one of my favorite watches I have in my collection. It's very true to the original with some amazing upgrades. I love this watch because it looks like the old one. And yes, it may look a little bit silly on my six and a half inch wrist, but when I wear this, I truly feel strong, ready for anything, and I feel like I'm wearing a film icon. Anyway, towards the end of last year, Seiko released three new Arnie's to celebrate the 40th anniversary. But the one I've got from Francis and Gay Jewelers is the SNJ037, an all black PVD coated stainless steel affair with a stainless steel bracelet. Now just remember, I love this watch because it is very true to the original. These new ones, I'm afraid Seiko can't call the Arnie and I won't be buying one. Let me tell you why and also have a listen to my wife's thoughts at the end of the show. Are you Seiko Arnie ready? Let's go. Okay, so here it is, the SNJ037. This PVD black version is a limited edition, limited to 4,000 pieces. The other two I mentioned at the start of the show are just special editions, meaning they're gonna make loads of them. And I must say the workmanship on this watch is fantastic. I'm loving that stainless steel shroud already and the all black look is so tactical. But there are key things that Seiko have changed or added to make this not an Arnie watch anymore. If I compare it to my SNJ025, you can see that the LCD screen is not at the top of the dial anymore. It's been moved to the bottom. That completely changes the whole look of this watch and no longer makes it an Arnie. I'm really trying to understand why Seiko have done it. Because this new watch has upgraded features, does the screen need to be at the bottom now? The screen is bigger. Have they put it there for better legibility? This dial has an absolutely iconic design. Go! can change it. The LCD screen is bigger, which means there's less space on the dial for the indices. And what Seiko have had to do is cut half of the indices at the bottom. It's another what the heck were you thinking moment from Seiko. This is not an Arnie. Let's talk about the other elephants in the room, shall we? The pushers are in the wrong place. And they've added one. So on my SNJ025, what was the A button has now been moved to where the B is. And the B is now in the top right of this new one. The sole purpose of the bottom right pusher is exclusively only for the new feature that's pretty pointless I'll tell you in a minute about. So big pushers in the wrong place. This isn't an army. What I would say is look at the colours of those pushers. Look at that blue and red. I really do love that touch. Screw down crown and screw down case back. This again is a 200 meter diver. ISO certified. Professional divers watch. Also if you see around the case the SNJ025 only has 
three hex screws around the sides of the case. With the 037, we've got five. I can only think that these two I'm showing you right now are to do with the sensors with this new movement. Because why add two more rivets? Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Now I've got to say I do love this black look, but the only way to buy it is with this black bracelet. It's stainless steel, it's pin and collars. What I was very surprised about, particularly as this is an over 600 pound watch, they haven't even bothered coloring in the clasp. And it's just a pressed one. I get it off this bracelet straight away and onto a silicone one. Just how Arnie would have worn it. It does have a diver's extension and there are enough micro adjusts to make this fit nicely on your wrist, but I'm not a fan. <laughs> Both the 025 and these new ones are protected with a hard lex crystal. Some people will not be happy that this hasn't got sapphire in it, but Seiko's argument is if this goes underwater for diving and you bonk it on some coral reef or a hammerhead shark, the glass won't shatter. Yeah, right. It really wouldn't cost Seiko that much to put sapphire in it. <laughs> Now I love the bezel action on my SNJ025. It's like no other Seiko that I own and I can only describe it as being a sort of 80s feel. Take a listen. With the 037, it's much more like a Seiko turning bezel. You know that spongy one genus? Not as loud, but still 120 clicks like the SNJ025. I've got to admit, I much prefer the concave look to the bezel and aluminium insert to this new one as well. It just accentuates the tooliness of this bezel. And I could twist it all day long. Kurt Santana would be very happy. Super! What the 037 has is a red seconds hand. And to be fair, that's quite a nice touch. The hour and minute hands are definitely bigger than the SNJ025. But what I really don't like is the arrow of the minute hand goes not only past the indices, but onto that LCD screen. It makes it look awkward and makes you think something's out of place. Why the f did they change it? Okay, let's talk about the loom, the hands, the indices. They have Lumabrite technology exactly the same as my SNJ025. Can't fault the loom whatsoever. But because the LCD screen is a little bit bigger on the 037, my SNJ025 is brighter. <laughs> Firstly, let me tell you that the movements inside both of these watches are fantastic. So no need to change a battery for a very long time. The analog handset is slaved to the LCD time. However, there is a dual time function on the LCD screen. You also get the stopwatch, you get your alarm, and with the new ones, you get a diving log. So if you're a diver, there is one out there, I'm sure. Anyone? Hello. Oh, there he is. <laughs> this one's for you. Keep your finger on that button. And once you're under one and a half meters, it will start recording the depth that you're in. It will also record the temperature of that depth, which is quite interesting. But seeing as though there won't be many times I go underwater more than half a meter, I won't get much use out of it. Also, it only records up to 80 meters of depth, which is very ironic and shows us all just how pointless having a 200 meters worth of water resistance truly is. Because if you go more than 80 meters worth, you'll probably be dead. Well, that's what Seiko thinks anyway. <laughs> Now I'm going to ask you guys a question and I think I know the answer. If someone was to buy an Arnie, what would be the main reason for it? Would it be because it's an inspired watch from an Arnold Schwarzenegger Seiko reference or are they buying it because it's a proper dive watch now with a diving log? Hmm. The added pusher and change of the formation of the pushers makes it not an Arnie for me. No, on my six and a half inch wrist, and this watch surprisingly does fit me. The Seiko wizardry strikes again, very small drilled lugs, which do point downwards towards the wrist, and that straight link bracelet just drops. I've got to say, with the pushers screwed out, exposing the red and the blue, this watch does look really nice. Very tactical and ready for business, but it's not an Arnie. 
So there we go, the SNJ037, the 40th anniversary to the Arnie Seiko. No, it's not, is it? If you're well into the Arnold Schwarzenegger Seiko Annie Digi watch, my advice is to not get this one at all. For a watch, it's fantastic. It ticks a lot of boxes, but because of those dramatic changes to the dial and the changing of the pusher placements, to me, it no longer looks like an Arnie. It looks like a very cool Seiko Annie Digi tuner diver. This one costs over £600, but I honestly would get the SNJ025 without a shadow of a doubt. It's a true reinterpretation of that H885, and to me, when I look at this watch, I'm just not seeing Arnie. This one, however, kicks ass. Here it is, my wife's first impressions of the SNJ037. <laughs> oh no, not another giant stopwatch. This is even uglier than yours. Too many buttons. Take it away. Thank you so much for watching till the end of this show. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like a little bit more of the Mad Watch Collector Show, why don't you join right here? <laughs> also, if I've got you for a few minutes longer, check this bad boy out. This is going to set you wild. Don't know what that means, but it's a great show. Go on, get on there. Click it. Go on. Click it. Go on. Click. Click it!